the biggest thing about dashboard design. A lot of times there can be too much at once. There can be way too much information on there. And it's about like peeling back and getting to that real goal of, okay, what story am I trying to tell? How can I use design to really emphasize the point that I'm trying to get across in this visualization? Knowing where to highlight and emphasize with color is really important. I never technically was a full graphic designer by job title, just my education and longtime artist, but that type of stuff just sticks with you. And then it's just like second nature at some point of knowing how to use those pieces to promote that story that you're trying to tell. So hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Seekers of the Viz. Today I have Lara with me to talk about her journey in Tableau and all the amazing business that I've been doing. We have been working at Disney for 10 years plus. So maybe walk us through how that journey has changed for you from operation role to a more analytics focus and how Tableau has helped you along the way and stuff like that. Yeah, so my name is Lara Wilson. I am a BI analyst at Disney in the People Insights Department, so very HR focused. I've been in this role for about eight months now. And before that, as you said, I started in what was called the college program. So I worked literally within Walt Disney World at the front selling tickets, which Sounds like a very strange transition, especially because I actually started in graphic design and the role in ticketing was strangely data centric. And I was just really curious because it's not something I was exposed through my earlier education. So I actually ended up going back to school for my master's in business analytics. And that kind of pushed me into my next couple of roles with being resource management, still a little operational and using data to do analysis and creating these Tableau visualizations to report out to our business users. Because my background in graphic design and this kind of intersection between design and data has always piqued my interest. This recent role giving me an opportunity to really put both of my backgrounds into use. So that's kind of been my last 10 years of gradually getting a little bit more comfortable with Tableau over the time. So from a design background, was it hard to get into data concepts? Because it's vastly different industry. Yeah. For sure. People are always confused at me when I'm like, my degree is technically graphic design and illustration. Um, and moving over to data, it was a vast jump, but the way I look at it is it's all a little bit of problem solving, right? I have these guidelines, I have these requirements, and it's about figuring out how what I have can work together, right? I think there is a little bit of transitionability and a little bit easier of a bridge, if that makes any sense. I think generally for data folks, mm -hmm. they all struggle with the design portion because they don't see design as it is. They see numbers and all. But you coming from a design background gives you a little bit of advantage when it comes to typography, color choices, layout planning and stuff like that. So what are the key design principles, you know, retain that help you create the visualizations you do these days? Yeah, I think the biggest thing about dashboard design, a lot of times there can be too much at once. There can be way too much information on there. And it's about like peeling back and getting to that real goal of, okay, what story am I trying to tell? How can I use design to really emphasize the point that I'm trying to get across in this visualization? Knowing where to highlight and emphasize with color is really important. I never technically was a full graphic designer by job title, just my education and longtime artist, but that type of stuff just sticks with you. And then it's just like second nature at some point of knowing how to use those pieces to promote that story that you're trying to tell. Ultimately, data visualization, it's about how you highlight the things that are important mm -hmm. and you can do that through typography, through color, by changing the visual hierarchy of stuff. So your profile is really interesting because I think if we, we scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a lot of experimental calculations and challenges that you've done for Workout Wednesday and Makeover Monday. But as you go further up, you know, you start to see a little bit of your visual flair coming into play. You have the scatter plot that you did for mobile phone specs. You have Black History Month. And the most recent one that you did was this histogram, which is really interesting because this is done and entirely in just one sheet. So map layers has really been a little bit of an experiment for me over the last couple months. Those 
beautiful tables that you can do with map layers have become really popular. I will not say this was necessarily the easiest thing for me. I'm not like 12 years deep in my Tableau experience. So sometimes I'm still trying to figure out all the different ways we can do calculations and stuff like that. Would I recommend using this in your day-to-day -day dashboards at work? Honestly, probably not. Scalability, sustainability, I don't think we can unlock a whole lot necessarily. This honestly came from Andy Kreibel map layer masterclasses. And I was like, well, that would be a great idea to implement some of these ideas that he was recommending. What's gonna happen this year in Iron Viz is that a lot of folks will going to be using map layers because traditionally, if you look at the past year's iron list, uh, to do something like this would require you to have a lot of floating elements and making sure that everything aligns properly. But with map layers, you don't have that problem. Yep. I think that's going to be the trend that we see this year. Yeah, especially because to your point, once you get it and you get it put together, there's not a lot of variability in the data coming in and stuff like that. You can make it however you want, right? Especially with something like Iron Viz, what a great opportunity to kind of implement that and show that you A, have those skills and B, can put together a design that's a little bit more in your control, if you will, so. Yeah, for anyone who's thinking about Iron Viz this year and using map layers, try to parameterize everything that you do so you don't have to go in one by one for each of the calculations. So that's my hot take on that. <laughs> Yeah, it's so much easier when you do that. And the other trick I got it from the masterclass was to set up the dashboard or the visualization in the final size that you're going to want initially, and then go from there. Cause it is a lot easier once you've got everything sized, how you want it, as you're doing those calculations back and forth that it's scaled the way you want it to. Yeah, that, that's a perfect point because we only have four weeks, like technically three weeks, because you have maybe one to two weeks of data gathering and stuff like that. So. Having the fixed size at the start gives you the framework and structure, and you can do mockups according to that. You can shift charts around until you get to the final idea that you want, then put everything in Tableau together. I think that is probably the easiest for hitting the deadlines because it is a very stressful period. I have not had the pleasure of an October as stressful yet trying to do Iron Viz, so, so maybe next year. It takes over your life for October. <laughs> It does, <laughs> but it's fun because it's one of those challenges that really put forth everything that you learned so far uh, and trying to go beyond what you usually do. I think that is, I mean, not necessarily to win the competition, but also for you to ascertain, you know, okay, this is currently where I'm at. I've managed to grow by that much, kind of accounting your personal growth. And it's very validating in that sense because years ago, I probably would have done this, but I've now understood how to use map layers, for example. Right. I think one of the things I'm most interested in is I want to have the scores for multiple years to see your own growth and stuff like that. Cause that's just such a validating thing, right? To see how much you grow from year to year and how much better you're getting. Yeah, that's exactly that. You can actually request for scores at, at the end of the Iron Viz grading. Uh, so that's, that's a good one. The judges for Iron Viz qualifiers are a panel of community leaders, like the ambassadors, the visionaries, and they usually add a lot of comments, points that you can improve on. So it helps having that kind of feedback. Like even for yeah. me, I've used Tableau for probably the past six years, but there's still things that I do wrong all the time. <laughs> so I need someone to point that out to me. Right. I feel you. I think generally all of your other visits, like this, this is something that I'm really intrigued by it because it's basically a pie chart, but done in such a thematic way that it just works. This stems through your design background because like the plates and the chopsticks, how did this idea come about? You know, this one, I'm a little, like, it's not the most exciting of my visits for sure, but I'm most proud of, this is a hundred percent one map layer chart. But to your point, every once in a while, when I'm looking through see the data that they put out for the challenge, I get like one good idea every once in a while, right? The mobile phone one, I was like, oh, let's put those scatter plot on a mobile phone screen. Okay. That could be creative. Let's do that. Or with this one, it was like, let's make a plate and do a pie chart. Right. And then I was like, okay, we're talking about Asian food chopsticks kind of makes a little bit of sense. So I went there and then I do the whole floating thing and call it a day. But then I was just like, 
no, we've been playing with map layers enough lately. We're going to figure out how to make this all one map layer. So I was like, let's go in the illustrator. Let's make some chopstick vectors, make shapes, and then throw those on here as well. So that's why I love these makeover Mondays, right? With these types of challenges, I can really use some of those graphic designs and illustration skills to really push the boundaries of, of what I would normally make. I think that's a pretty common theme. Even for me, I do lots of dashboards at work. I, yeah. I don't want to do dashboards that have no public. Right. I know my portfolio here is very missing of anything that's business related. At some point, I'm going to have to make a dashboard to put on my Tableau public. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm going to have a lot of fun with the makeover Mondays and make some fun visualizations. Have you seen Lisa's noodle chart? That was oh my really God, it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. When I saw it, I was just like, but how? It was so creative. I, I think she did a blog oh, on like, it. Yes, yes, she did a blog on it. Like I, when I saw this, I was like, what? Yeah, my brain does not go that far. Like I can't even like yeah. it's so good. I love the creativity of our community. Everyone mm -hmm. always have these great ideas and we basically feed off each other's ideas. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm very excited to see where other people take this and run with it. Maybe we'll see it in Iron Biz, I don't know. For sure. I mean, even the fortune cookie here, like what a great idea. Perfect. Chef's kiss. So you've been doing a lot of Workout Wednesday and Makeover Monday. Is there anything that you are working on now? Like any community projects that you are looking to expand into, you know, hint, hint, games type this? <laughs> You know, right now I feel a little guilty because I made that the workout Wednesday tracker to keep mm -hmm. myself on track and I've been a little bit bad. So I am a couple weeks behind, which <laughs> does need to be remedied in the very near future. But then trying to throw in some other challenges in there. As I said, I think I do need to do some more business challenges. There was a new business community challenge that I was going to look into and start to do some of those as well. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I can join in those. Yeah. So I think the most important thing is that you're enjoying yourself. That's one. The business challenge that you're talking about, it's by Ojo and Uma. Uh, they started this 52 week business dashboard challenge. So every week they have a promo that you can challenge yourself to build something. It's interesting because Uma is one of the mentees from the Tableau Sandbox Party program. We finished the first cohort so he kind of graduated from that so i'm really happy to see him flying in the real world with ojo who is also one of the committee leaders in the space yeah i love it because sometimes i get a little bit of analysis paralysis of trying to decide what i want to do if i don't have a data set so it's a little bit nice for all of the community projects to give you all these opportunities of like, okay, you don't have to get stuck in the vast interweb of data to pr explore. Here are some options and you can easily just jump in and get started. So true. Cool. So it's been really great chatting with you, Lara, on your journey, on what you have achieved over the past 10 years <laughs> in your journey. I think that's really impressive. Going from design to data is definitely not an easy path, but you did it. You finished your master's as well. You are throwing yourself into the community, doing all this and having fun, the most important part of it. So thank you again, Lara, for spending time with us today. I hope everyone gets inspired by you as well. And we'll see everyone at the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.